Yeah, we have the mic. We have the mic. Hi, guys. Uh, are you able to hear us clearly? OK. So uh, I'm Kishore, and uh, I'm here to present about what we have done at Lumerius. Um, along with me is my colleague, Parag. Um, I'm having almost like you know, 25 years of experience, and I have been uh, working in creating data strategies for multiple organizations. Uh, in multiple uh, sectors like uh, finance, healthcare, and education, etc. And I'm a multi cloud architect, and uh, I love always to be like you know, a hands on guy. Parag? So, myself, I ho hope you can hear me. Myself, Parag, uh, I am again uh, uh, associate architect at Lumeris. I've been in the industry of more or less on data management side for the last 20 years or so. And just a fun fact, I am playing for US team as a carom player. I'm a third-ranked US player. So just, you know, we are here to talk about what Lumeris is and what it does. OK. Uh, Lumeris is just not a healthcare company. And we are, like, you know, one of the leading providers for value-based care. Under our belt, we, we, have, we manage around 12 billion of medical spend across multiple clients. And we are there in more than 12 plus uh, uh, markets across US uh, in the value-based uh, care. In this, we have created, uh, it is not only uh, just, we are not creating a platform and giving it to the clients. We are there with them in the trenches in terms of both the risk and the reward, right? So we will be there in terms of managing end-to-end -end for the clients, and we share the risk along with the clients. So that's the one of the USP of what we do in Lumeris. Um, in the terms of data, in every organization we know we have huge amounts of data. Our company does make money by finding proper insights to figure out how the population is doing to the level of an individual patient. So when we are helping the health systems, we do look at the overall population as such in that particular uh, health system, as well as to the lowest level of a patient combination to a, director, uh, to a doctor. And when the decisions are clear, Right? Then uh, from this data, we try to derive as much information as possible about uh, each individual as well as at the level of the group. And then we give specific insights to the uh, patients and as well as to the doctors or the providers saying that, hey, how do you make them, how do you may, uh, keep the people healthy so that you know they are not being uh, using the like you know uh, emergency cares or like you know uh, surgeries that are required. So we predict the data like you know based on certain elements. We predict saying that hey, this this may be the high risk population. Why don't you guys take do this A B C D so that we can bring from, bring them from high risk to a low risk uh, members. So that is where like you know all our analytics and predictions do happen. So once we have the clear path, like uh, uh, when we have the data, it's just like a raw diamond. And when we clearly get the insights about those particular people, it's just like a gem, like you know, where it, the value addition is like you know, 10 to 20x. So similarly, the quicker we do it, the more lives we save. So I mean, like I think most of the technology company, right, we've have these are the common challenges that we go through we have like like any other company we have a also have an ecosystem where our systems are mostly on prem and we want to take it to the cloud and how do we and these are i mean with the modern architecture and modern uh, technology that is in place how do we utilize them to uh, get i mean to uh, to achieve these objectives and then at the same time, right, what are the different challenges that we have? So like most of the time, in our case, right, when the analyst or data scientist says, 
I need a data, I need it yesterday. But then what end up happening is being on-prem system, there is a lag or there is a delay in delivering that data to the data scientist. So those are the, I mean, then obviously as you see, like uh, on-prem system has challenges like you submit a uh, request to the technology team saying, okay, load the data for me. It takes X, Y, Z number of days to load the data by the time your opportunity has passed away, right? So all these objects to you are the challenges, keeping in those challenges in mind. This is what the, I mean, when we came up with the idea about this framework, we have thought about all these challenges and objective, keeping the objective in mind. So now coming to the project fuse, okay, now Parag has explained what the challenges we have, and this project fuse is like, you know, one of, one of the major challenges that we have is the legacy systems on the on-prem the on -prem systems. So in order to find better insights, we need to bring, liberate the data from on-prem to cloud so that, you know, we can do much more quicker insight, uh, bringing out much more faster one. Earlier, like, you know, if you need to bring a data set, like, you know, a few sets of tables, uh, first a ticket needs to go, then the data people, uh, you know, the data engineers are going to work on top of it, bring the, load the data into the cloud, and then the other people can start working on it. And it used to take like, you know, uh, from three weeks, two to three weeks to get this whole thing from all the way from development to the production. But now, uh, it, it happens in less than two to three days, so which is like, you know, almost 10x the productivity that we are getting uh, just to bring any data sets from there. So I this framework is just not only just uh, bringing the data from on-prem and other different, different sources, which I'm going to show in the next slide, uh, it's going to be, it, it's not only going to do bring the data, it's going to do a lot of uh, built-in functionality. Say, for example, you want to do an audit log, if you want to do a, a, a data validation checks, these are all like, uh, these are all the plugins that are there on top of this particular framework where it is like an, very much extendable and uh, so that's going to help, like for example, if you want to change the columns in the source to the target, like the standards in SQL Server are completely different, for example, in Redshift, right? So we are going, this framework automatically gives the way to change, say, SQL Server standards usually use like the caps, and in the Redshift we use small letters or a camel case or whatever, right? So it does all that mapping, everything inbuilt, so that, you know, just you put few metadata records and that's going to bring, it, 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 it's going to load the data from wherever is the source and whatever is the target. So in this one, if you see here, like we have the, uh, this is the overall like in the slide where we have multiple data sources, like the application data, like an on-premise, Salesforce, other cloud-based data. Uh, and then th these are all the things which I'm saying, like in say for example, in this data loads, another issue is, okay, my data load has happened today. Did it load successfully? If any error is there, who, has it been informed to the incident management team? So we have another plugin into this particular framework. It, any errors are happening, it's going to take based on the complexity, whether it is a warning or whether it is a big complete failure, it's going to create incident tickets and it is going to create, like in a based on the level, like whether it needs to go to immediately call the support engineers or whatever it is, that entire framework is built into this particular thing. Similarly, like, you know, we, we can go back and see what are all the logs, what are all the audit, these are all built in. And another data validation is another plugin into this particular framework wherein we can set up uh, in every table, what based on the KPIs, for each KPI, we can configure what type of rules that we want to use to ensure that the data, whatever we have in source, is matching with the target or any transformations that we have done on the way. Okay. So these are like, you know, just I'm putting it in a different format here. Before you go there, I mean, yeah. another thing, aspect of this framework is we are on a daily basis as of now, even though the data source is coming from on-prem to the cloud, from the stream, 
around half a million half a million rows we are loading in 50 minutes or so including all tracking all these stats that we doing all those validation on the type of the data that gets trans transitioned from one place to another it's around all these processes is done in 50 minutes and on the top of that uh, once the data is loaded if you want to load here are the dependency processes that needs to be loaded further down the line after the data loads are complete those are also are tracked are executed as part of this framework and it's all configurable so what we have majority of our data is running on the on prem like you know the all uh, uh, regular transactional systems are still like you know running on on prem so that's uh, majority of them are in sql server so that's the main one of the source for us and the second one is like the cloud based we get few applications are using postgres we are bringing data from postgres then uh, dynamo db then uh, you know uh, s3 we have salesforce we we integrate some data from salesforce service now all these saas platforms also are integrated into it so once we have the source and target configured any number of tables like you know just it's a metadata it's just keep inserting into metadata and you have the data whatever you want in your redshift or as of now we are using like you know uh, for metadata all the uh, transactional things like for example postgres or sql server can be used for setting up the metadata and our uh, uh, our requirement is to bring entire data into uh, redshift but this framework can be ex uh, is being used by extending it into other transactional sources as well like you know sql server and postgres also people are using it to load some data on the fly so uh, as you can see this is just a representation of single snap logic pipeline which does the job of the framework that we just talked about which has covering all the objectives which are getting rid of all the the roadblocks that we had as you can see this is this framework is just a plug and play as you can see it says what is my source and what is my target you just the number of source and target increases you just add a plug in there and the process will take care of it no more than that so that is it it gives you all these benefits while do, loading the data now we talked about the framework now how do i use that framework this basically gives me i have let's say for example all those different sources that we saw data coming in from all those sources how, and then there is interdependency between the load how do i configure that so this is the workflow that you can see as easy as simple workflow that is built which is using that framework and this is what is loading our half a million rows and it took me probably half a day to configure it so that is how powerful that framework is and how easy it is to load that information so this is again when we talk about the framework right and metadata what all things that you can capture as you can see there is obviously you, you set up the list of job that you need to run what are job related whether and what are the different entities that you are loading from the source and the target and then after the uh, the data load what are the dependency that i want to execute on the target side after the data loads are complete see all is all configuration there is no i can what we have done is this is to start with we had a manual process to load this configuration we have built another framework on the top of this which you, allows you to uh, figure out what is my source and target understand what is the the data types on both sides and write to the configuration directly so which takes the manual process out of the picture and this again towards the end of it we have the error logs what are the errors that we during the day loads where are they we also have the lo load logs what time and how much time it took how many rows it loaded when it the process started when it ended so this is the and then we are now building the dashboard on the top of it which gives us more insight as to whether if there, there is a change is needed to be done in the configuration which makes the load run faster 
So as a result of that, the, sorry, these are all those different benefits. Okay, what we have also achieved by doing this is, this configuration not only is done by the engineering side or technology, we are giving this configuration in the hands of data scientists and analysts who can run, generate that configuration and load their data that they want from a three weeks period to a two minute process for a data scientist to load for the data that they want. So technology is out of the picture. They are able to run their process on their own. And uh, here are different best practices that we have followed. As you can see, we have approach is modular approach when we talk about the plug and play, uh, any no new source that comes in, and then error handling, logging, monitoring, and the performance on a daily basis. So just you know, only one thing which I wanted to point out here is, OK, we are talking so many aspects for this particular framework. Um, people might think like, you know, it might have taken a year or a year and a half or two years to build this kind of framework. Just any wild guess from the audience, like, you know, how much time did it took? It would have taken. Ten months? No. Sorry, what was the question? No. How much time? Did it take us to okay. come up with the framework? Just like, you know, it was developed, the main core was developed over a weekend. The main core was developed just over a weekend. That's it. And all the plugins, everything, one and a half percent developed. Only one resource and a half resource, part-time, right, who are doing the other project. And we were able to develop this whole thing in less than a month. And it's a productionized framework. And it is productionized, and it has been loading data for past nine to ten months. And we are loading, as we said, like you know, half a million rows on an average. Like you know, we are going all the way to like you know, uh, much more than that. And uh, that we are loading in 50 minutes. So the main power of Snap Logic is to like you know make these kind of frameworks very 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 fast. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. And if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to take it. Thank you. Yeah, we have about a minute left if anyone else has a question. If not, of course, you can get the answer at uh, Snap Logic's booth, which is close by, right, Michael? Right over there. No questions? None? You're going to let us off that easy? Excellent, Baldo. OK. All right, thank you for coming. I want to thank these two rock stars, Kishar and Padraig.